Now, our next speaker for the negative team is a lady who didn't earn the nickname Zippy for nothing. As one of Australia's most respected and versatile television producers, she has toured the world and can, in fact, fluently say, I'm sorry we don't have the budget for that, in eight languages. <laughs> you might also like to know that in the past, she was an entrant in the Miss Lismore Quest. Ooh. She's been a jingle singer, and perhaps most intriguingly, ladies, she was Simon Baker. You know, that's the hottie off The Mentalist. She was his biology lab partner for two whole classes. <laughs> Props. And I just want to know, did you actually get any work done or did you just, st just stare at that pretty face? Yeah, uh, there's no way you're getting work done with him around. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome the very lovely and very lucky Karen Hayward. <laughs> Even with Simon there, I still didn't like biology. Don't know what's wrong with me. As you are enjoying your pre-lunch drinks in the foyer, you may have noticed a patch of masking tape set out on the floor. That masking tape goes a long ways to demonstrating an important point. 87% of people who spotted the message in tape walked around it. That's right, that darling little patch of tape stopped you in your tracks and altered your course. No matter that it was just a little bit of tape on the floor and made no sense and posed no danger, the way it was framed made you think that there might be something dangerous, so you changed your direction. It's much the same when we focus on anything, good or bad. Our focus becomes our thoughts, and our thoughts determine our actions. Granted, affirmative team, we have acknowledged that there are gaps, but this debate is all about whether we mind them, and we believe that we can choose to change that negative focus. Except that if we focus on the gaps, the differences, the negatives, the more they'll be front of mind, part of our day. And accept that times have changed and that we need to move past well-worn and weary stereotypes. I'd like to speak a little about Germaine Greer. Germaine has been an amazing champion of the women's movement over many, many years. But she is seemingly failing to adapt and is losing relevance with her audience, women. For a number of years, we've had the baby boomers in, in positions of influence in corporate Australia. But we're about to see a changing of the guard, with young managers about to step in to fill those roles, a generation that is bringing new outlooks experiences and expectations. Preparing for this debate has been an amazing journey uh, for all of us, I'm sure. In considering this topic, I've read a number of articles that have all had similar observations. In one such article, Keris Wigfall, head of compliance at ING in the US, advised women to watch out for self-imposed limitations. She said, I can't say that I've had challenges because of my race or my sex, but I think we enable obstacles when we expect race or sex to be a challenge. If you expect it, you start to limit yourself. She continued, you begin pulling back because you think someone's gonna hold you back. I made the decision that I was going to succeed, that I was going to get the opportunities that I wanted, and I worked hard to get them. Kelly Whittleski from uh, Ernst & Young in the US also considered challenges faced within her industry and suggested that barriers often seem to be self-belief and self-confidence, especially if you're operating in an environment which is very male-normed. But now that we're intergenerational, we're benefiting from the workplace pioneers and also, also seeing the Gen Y expectations of change so that norms are being kicked away on a daily basis. I think progression in the future will be more rapid and these barriers will fall. Closer to home, it might be nice to get the perspective of a woman who is in a position of enormous responsibility. Thank you, Karen. 
Look, I am delighted to have the opportunity to speak to you all here today. I'm not used to being the negative, or shall we say, in opposition, but I am happy to weigh in with my two cents worth on this important topic. I think I am uniquely placed to comment on minding the gap. If I had minded the gap, where do you think I would be now? Surely not standing in front of you good Australian people having my say. Surely now that so many gaps have been narrowed, it's time to consider looking past them, not down but forward to a future that becomes possible because we are not just talking the talk, we are walking the walk. Honestly, I do believe that the only gap we need to mind other ones in the footpath. Quite seriously, take it from me. There are traps everywhere and it does pay to keep an eye out for those. And I've got one word for you on this topic, ladies. Heels. Watch them. May I leave you with this thought and to borrow from a famous line, it really is time to move forward. Well, it is hard to argue with that. This is the end game. We're not sweeping the past away and we're certainly not trying to denigrate the journey. But surely it was always the aim to get to a point where we don't need to mind the gap. We change up the thinking and get on with it, thereby eliminating it and moving past it. This is especially important, I think, for corporate women because of the trickle-down effect. If corporate women move past the gap, that will set the standard for other elements of society. Corporate women are uniquely placed to influence the debate in what they will and will not accept, who they will and will not work for, and to influence their purchasing decisions, the social media networks and their voice. Look, I do believe that we have a clear way ahead, one that does make sense. We are at a crossroads. We have a wonderful opportunity to walk down a new, exciting path. Using what we've learnt from the past, opening our minds, and giving ourselves the freedom to enjoy our choices. Thank you very much.